Good morning. Today is Thursday, March 12, 2020. My name is Lilia. And today, we're going to look at the Coca-Cola company. Ticker symbol is KO. Coca-Cola is a stock that I have been wanting to buy for a long time, but it got too expensive for me. But now, with the sell-off, this might be a good time for me to consider buying some shares of Coca-Cola. I do want to mention that this is not a recommendation. This is just a stock that I am interested in, but it may not be the right thing for you to do. I just want you to watch this video so you can learn how to buy stocks, if that's something you're interested in. There is a bit of research that you need to do before you jump in and start buying stocks. What I have in front of us is a three-year daily chart of Coca-Cola. Right now, Coke is trading at around $48. The markets are still open, so you're going to see these numbers changing. Today, Coke dropped about $3.80, which is about a 7% drop. That is pretty big for a one day drop. And you can see right here, it actually gapped down today. But I want you to notice that it is becoming cheaper. The three year low was at $41. So as I'm thinking about buying this stock, I need to decide what price do I really want to pay for this stock. I could try to get it at around 41 or maybe even lower. That, of course, depends on how badly I want to own the stock. So before I do that, we need to do some research on Coke. I'm using the Thinkorswim platform, which is part of TD Ameritrade, and I clicked on this little down arrow to open up this information about Coke. PE right now is 23, which I think is still a little high. So I'm not going to jump in and buy Coke at $48. Looking at this chart, I think Coke may actually go down a little more. Coke pays a quarterly dividend of 41 cents per share. Its dividend date is March 13, which is tomorrow. So if you really wanted to get this dividend, then today, March 12th, is the last day that you can buy this stock and be eligible for this upcoming dividend. You need to own the stock one day before the ex dividend date to qualify for the upcoming dividend. Of course, as we all know, on the day that the dividend is paid out, the price of the stock is also adjusted. So it's not really like you made money on the dividend. But some people like to have a dividend because it is extra cash. Coming over here, under yield, it says 3.38%. This is assuming that I am paying approximately $48.50 for the stock to get this dividend of $0.41 cents per share. If I get the stock at a cheaper price, then obviously my yield is going to be higher because everybody who owns the stock will get 41 cents. However, some people paid more for the stock and some people paid less for the stock. So you can look at this yield as kind of the return on your capital. It's the indirect return. It's not the real return. It's just indirectly. Coming way over here on the right hand side, there's a number under beta, 0.4277. A beta of one means that the stock is just as volatile as the S&P 500 index. So a beta of 1 means that the stock has the same degree of volatility as the S&P 500. A beta less than 1 
means that the stock is less volatile than the S&P 500. And a beta of more than one means that the stock is more volatile than the S&P 500. Depending on your own risk tolerance, you may prefer a low beta stock or you may prefer a high beta stock. Low beta stocks tend to be a little more stable and that also means you can sleep better at night. You can just hold the stock as a long-term investment and not have to worry about the stock crashing. A high beta stock means it's going to be much more volatile. So it could go up a lot. It could also go down a lot. So depending on what side of the trade you're on, you could get, you can make more money theoretically with a high beta stock, but you need to be much more active as a trader and much more vigilant. That means you need to keep an eye on the stock if it has a high beta. When you're considering buying a stock, you need to just go onto Google and do some research. Find out if there's any recent articles about that company. And right away, I see three recent articles about Coca-Cola. So I'm going to read each one of these articles and make a decision. This one it seems interesting. It is written by The Motley Fool and the title is, Is Coca-Cola's Dividend Sustainable? And I had just finished talking about the 41 cent dividend, which I like. But according to The Motley Fool, is that dividend sustainable? So I'm going to read these articles and continue with the recording. I just finished reading the article by Motley Fool and it is a positive article concerning Coca-Cola. So now let's proceed on how we're going to buy this stock. What I have in front of us is the options chain for the April 17, 2020 expiration cycle. And it looks like the CBOE is not really keeping up with the recent sell-off of stocks. The lowest price that it goes to, the, the straight price, is only $35. And there is about a 14% chance that Coca-Cola could go down to $35 in the next 36 days. That could happen. I would like to see a few more strikes below 35, but for now, this is all we have. Let's jump over to the April 24 expiration cycle. And I want you to notice something really interesting here. Notice these wide bid ask spreads. They're huge. The spread is over $2 wide. So whenever you're selling options and you see a wide bid ask spread like this, that means you should probably not trade those options because you're not going to get a very good price. So let's go back to the April 17 expiration cycle. These are a little bit tighter, so I like this better. There are two ways to buy stock at a lower price. The number one way is to just decide on your target price and set a limit order to buy an X number of shares at your target price and set it as a GTC or good to cancel order and just let it sit there and wait. The second way to buy stock at a lower price is to sell put options with your target buy price. Right now, Coke is trading at around 48 and the stock is still dropping as I speak. Do I want to buy the stock at 35 or 40? $40 is $7 below today's price and there's a 25% chance that it could go down to that level. And if I sell this put option, I will also receive approximately $1.17 per contract and that is $117 as I wait. I could go down to 35 and I'll get 58 cents or 
for this option. There's a 14% chance of this happening. When I say this happening, I mean assignment. So let's do a quick review of the risk of selling put options. When you sell a put option, you get paid up front because you are taking on the risk of assignment. An assignment simply means that if the stock price drops below your strike price, you are at risk of assignment. An assignment means that you will have to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock at your strike price. Each contract controls 100 shares of the stock. So if I sell this put option, I will receive $60 up front, but if the stock drops below $35 between now and April 17, I'm at risk of getting assigned 100 shares of Coke at $35 per share. 35 is $12 below today's current price. I think having the chance to buy Coca-Cola at $35 is certainly very attractive. As a seller of a put option, I get paid to wait for the stock to go down to that price. If Coke stays above my straight price of 35 between now and April 17, then I'm not going to get assigned. The other way to acquire Coca-Cola at $35 per share is, as I mentioned, to just set a limit order with a target price of 35 and let it sit there. So now let me explore the pros and cons of each strategy. If I sell a put option with a straight price of $35 and the stock continues to drop, I'm going to start seeing paper losses in my trade and if I change my mind, it will cost me money to get out of that trade. That's one drawback. But the advantage of selling a put is that I am going to collect some money up front while I wait to see what happens. If I really want to get the stock at 35 cents, I mean, I'm sorry, at $35, then selling a put option and getting paid a little money up front is the right thing to do. On the other hand, if I put in a limit order to buy the stock, I could always change my mind without penalties. So if I put in a buy order of 100 shares of Coke at $35 limit price, GTC and Coca-Cola continues to drop and I get nervous and I want to lower my purchase price. I could always go back in and cancel my buy order and lower the target price. There's no penalty to do that. That also means that if Coca-Cola does not drop down to my new target price, then I will never own the stock and I also don't make any money while I am waiting. So I am going to use both strategies right here in my practice account so I can show you how this is going to play out. I'm going to do two. I'm going to sell two put options. One with a straight price of 35 and the other one is going to be the straight price of 40. And then I'm also going to put in a buy order of the stock without using options. Another difference between using put options and just a simple buy limit order is that with a buy limit order, I don't have to purchase 100 shares of the stock. I could just buy one share, 10 shares, whatever. When I'm selling put options, I have to do one contract minimum and each contract controls 100 shares of the underlying stock. So you need to weigh these two strategies and decide which one works for you. So let me go ahead and I'm going to sell this put option right now and have it fill. To buy stock in Thinkorswim, you click on the ask right here at the top. So I'm going to change my price to 35. That's my target price. 
limit order, good to cancel. So this is going to stay open until the stock price goes down to 35. If it never goes down to 35, then I will never buy the stock. And at some point, I can just go back in here and cancel this order. So here are my two short puts. Same expiration, different strike prices. And I collected 75 cents for the 35 strike option. And I collected $1.45 for the $40 put. Up at the top, this is my buy order of 100 shares of Coke at my target price of $35 per share. Good to cancel. So again, notice the difference is that for my buy order, $3,500 is tied up in this trade and I am not getting paid any money. But I could always change my mind and get out of this. On the other hand, my short put, I got paid $75 per contract, but if Coke continues to drop, then I'm gonna start seeing paper losses for this trade. And if I wanted to get out of the trade, it will probably cost me more than 75 cents to get out of it. So that's a drawback of selling a put option. We're gonna follow up on these trades on a regular basis so I can show you how they're progressing. So stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching and remember to share the knowledge and spread the wealth.